In this lesson, we'll continue our review of PSAT Math Test 2, Section 4, Calculator Permitted Questions 22 through 24. We know that the problem solving section ends at 27. These are going to be more difficult problems. So let's take a look at 22. In the xy plane, the graph of the function q is a parabola. The graph intersects the x axis at negative 1, 0, and r, 0. If the vertex of q occurs at the point 2, 4, what's the value of r? And so I think it helps for this problem. Let's sketch it out. And so Let's make, let's see, this will be our xy coordinate plane. And for our first point, we have both coordinates, negative 1, 0. All right, so this is negative 1, 0. Now, just from this, we don't know if the parabola opens up or down. We don't know if um, the other coordinate is this side or this side. But they do tell us the vertex of q is at 2, 4. This, is hel this helps us. So 2, 4. Is the other point so now we know that it's a downward opening parabola so this question really is not too difficult because we want now we know it's on this side r0 and if we sketch out the rest of it think about it like this it look like this we know that the vertex the x coordinate this is the axis of symmetry it's right in the middle of the parabola and so just focus on the x coordinates remember this was negative one this is positive 2. The distance over to the axis of symmetry is 3. So we have to extend 3 on this side. So we're already at 2 plus 3. R is 5. And that's it. D. All right, let's take a look at 23. <clears throat> Excuse me. Liquid going through a cooling system is chilled so that its temperature decreases at a constant rate from 100 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius in 5 seconds. Which of the following functions represents the temperature C in degrees Celsius as a function of the time T in seconds after chilling began? T is between 5 and 0, including those numbers. The key here is they tell us it's a constant rate. And so you have to recognize this is a linear equation. And so the first step, let's figure out the slope. We started at 100 degrees and then decrease to 25, so a decrease of 75 degrees Celsius, and it took five seconds. And so we can figure out, because it's linear, that it decreased 15 degrees Celsius per second. And we just have to construct the equation. So per second, T is seconds. And so we know that the slope is gonna be Y equals negative 15 T. And then think about what's the Y intercept? When t is 0, before any decrease, what was the starting value of the temperature? It was 100, so that's our y-intercept, and that's it. So it's negative 15t plus 100, and it is d, negative 15t plus 100. All right, let's look at the last question, number 24. The formula for the volume of a sphere with radius r is shown above. The radius of the planet Jupiter is about 11 times the radius of the planet Earth. Assuming that the planets are spheres, about how many times larger is the volume of Jupiter than the volume of Earth. This is a very common question. They're giving us this formula for the volume of a sphere. It's also given at the beginning of the section. You should know this. And so think about whatever we've got Earth, all right, we can figure out the volume, but we know that Jupiter is going to be 11 times this. So 11 times this equals Jupiter. And whenever they ask this, it's always going to be with a square or a cube. And you don't really even have to solve it. If you just think about, well, whatever Earth is, I'm just going to leave this formula, right? I'm just going to call Earth and just use the formula. But we know that Jupiter is 11 times. And so the R, the radius, 11 times the radius, is what you have to focus on. Because that's the only variable that's changing. So this is Earth. If the radius is 11 times, and this is sort of a trap answer. Some students might think, well, isn't 11 times bigger? First of all, it would never be that easy, especially for 24 out of 27. You just have to think about putting 11 in here and see what happens. So if I have this exact same formula for Jupiter, but then this r, it's going to be 11r cubed. What is the difference? So it's really just a factor of... 11 cubed. That's the difference. And so again, it's always asked with squares or cubes. And so let's just figure out, we'll take 11 cubed. And that's the difference. That's it, 1331.